Alright guys, uh, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video and welcome to 2022. So, Happy New Year to you guys as we already have reached 2022. Uh, so, this is the first video of the year and I'm going to be talking straight away into the new version 2.4 update. So, we got a notice already. Um, I was a bit late to this because it was one day ago, but we're still going to discuss about this. So the update goes live on 5th of uh, January, so there will be a maintenance as usual and after 5 hours usually you can log into the game and uh, start playing. So there will be a compensation of 300 Primo Gems and also there will be bug fixes of 300 Primo Gems as well, that's always standard from what I see. And so we're going to get total 600 Primo Gems just by logging in, which is amazing. So we pretty much know we're going to get 2 new characters which is Shenhe and Yujin, so these are the 2 new characters uh, that uh, is, will be in the game pretty cool a uh, new area so we got uh, pretty much the live stream showed us the new area of Ankanomiya looks pretty sick it's under Watasumi Island so it'll be interesting to see how it works the mechanic the day and night mechanic and also the chest exploration and so on so it'll be exciting to see that a uh, new event so with the new lantern ride festival coming again we're gonna have a bunch of events celebrating the new year so we've got the login event which starts on 25th of uh, January so a bit down the road but it's still free, 10 wishes, so can't really complain, so these are the rewards. Uh, we also got Lantern Rack gifts, so more rewards after that. So on, I think after this one ends, it's straight start the gifts one. So 9th of February until the end of version 2.4, so pretty cool. You're going to get more uh, fates here, you can get 3 more fates and some materials, pretty nice. And also fragile resin, so pretty, pretty cool. Um, so we got the event durations here, I think this is the Lantern Rack Festival events. And um, I'm sure you have to done all the prerequisite quests in order to do this one. Um, we also got, uh, oh yeah, I missed this part. We got the Prosperous, Prosperous Partnerships event, which basically you can exchange uh, for one free 4-star Lear character of your choice, which is pretty nice. And that includes Junjin as well, the new character as well, so pretty cool. Um, now let's move on to the equipment. So we got a new weapon, 5-star weapon for uh, Shenhe. I'm sure it's the best in slot for her. Uh, and I believe they've already showed the stats on it. Um, I can uh, show you guys later uh, of the pole arm. Uh, we've got a new outfit, so we pretty much got an idea. We've got a new Kuching skin and a new Ningguang skin you can get for free in the event. And this one's a paid uh, paid skin using Genesis Crystals at a discounted price uh, during the event. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, new main story, so this one I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the new Archon quest has coming, so it's going to be an uh, interlude chapter act one and uh, the crane returns of the wind. So, we'll be interested to see regarding the wheel building of the jade chamber as well. Uh, very excited for that. And we have new hangout events as well, series uh, five. Uh, Ningguang Yunjun is added now into the hangout events. Really cool. New world quest, so this is to be expected because we're getting a new area, so we have some new world quest to do there. Uh, we got new commissions as well, so they mentioned this in the developer discussion the, on 24th of December. Check that out over here, the video if you missed it. Um, they mentioned they're going to add 11 new daily commissions, so that's pretty nice. Um, not the same old ones like last time, looks like we're going to get more uh, story or quest to do uh, instead of the same old ones, which can get a bit boring. Alright, so new enemies, so in the new area for sure we're going to get new enemies, so we've got a bunch of new v shapes here. Uh, we also got, I think, the Abyss Lector, the Pyro version of it, pretty nice. Uh, we got now we have all the elements of the Spectres, we have the Pyro, Electro, and Cryo. So even more Spectres that are very annoying, uh, that will be in the open world, so pretty cool. Um, so we have other additions as well, so new recipes, um, I'm sure there will be new recipes because we have new characters, new achievements as well because we have new, uh, new region, I guess, so new achievements for that. Uh, Wonders of the World and Memories of Heart as well get some new achievements. Uh, new name cards, uh, new furnishings, um, there's some new features in the Serenity teapot. I think they showed us in the live stream as well. Um, and also we got a new uh, wildlife, looks like deep sea unagi and you can capture it using the new net gadget and the floating ray. I'm not sure this one, I think it's unique can fish on fish this uh, uh, ray. So new features, yep, uh, Divda ray and four molo ray, so you can fish these two. And yeah, pretty nice. And the Sacred Sakura's Favor 3 finally has been increased to level 50. So if you're wondering when you can max it out, 
looks like 2.4 you can max it out and if you have extra uh, electrocedials uh, you can exchange it at the Netsuke Noji and Crafts shop so that is a shop in Inazuma city where you, I mean most of us are waiting for it to open I think now is the time it's going to be open and we can exchange all our extra sigils for some stuff there I'm not sure what's going to be inside we'll find out when the update goes live so some enhancements to the weapons uh, enhancement materials forging page uh, new mailbox functions um, this is the new wheel customization function uh, mainly useful for console players uh, new control compare function um, okay some new screens uh, okay um, oh okay so if you complete the story quest lupus minor chapter uh, chapter at one uh, Vip Hounds Whelps will appear in, in Wovendom, so now Monstead will have some Inner Zuma uh, enemies as well, which is pretty interesting. So the Vip Hounds will be there if, you, if you're interested in hunting them down there, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now let's talk about the changes to Spire of Beast. So as you guys know, every time there's a new patch, there'll be always changes to the monster lineup uh, for each patch. So Floss 11 and 12 will undergo changes. Um, floor 9 to 10, usually they, they don't do anything about it, so it's only floor 11 and 12. So the Leyline Disorder has been changed to all party members' normal attack damage increased by 50%. So this is basically like a buff for any character that really skills with normal attack damage. For example, Yoimiya, I believe, um, Ito maybe. So a lot of characters that use normal attack damage, you're going to be benefiting from this disorder. Uh, floor 12. Uh, say certain opponents challenge possess the horn spirit effect which grants them 10% physical and all the rest when they are hit from these attacks they are considered normal attack damage they will lose 3% physical and all elemental rest so 30% uh, maximum 30% each may be lost in this way uh, and the rest lost in this way will be reset in 20 seconds so basically as again they emphasize emphasizing on normal attack damage so if you've got any characters that deals that you're gonna pretty much deal more damage to enemies, so yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, so these are the blessing of the. Uh, I think these are the blessings for the uh, for the abyss. Uh, from what I see, it's mainly boosting uh, the uh, the normal charge and plus attack damage for this one. Uh, this one is mainly AOE damage. If you're dealing normal damage, you get a 50% chance on doing some AOE damage through AOE damage. Uh, this one, um, if you deal a uh, normal charge on your attack, within 2 seconds, uh, they get a stack for 8 seconds, and yeah, so I think this one also deals like short waves, um, so pretty nice, you're getting more damage, but all these are physical damage, so yeah, just think on that. And some other adjustments, looks like we get the adjust of, adjustments on the height of the central stage disc, so if you guys don't know, in the center stage of, of the abyss, all the levels, there is a circle in the middle. And I'm not sure you guys encounter this issue if you're using Mona or Ayaka. Um, sometimes you get stuck in the central stage dish, maybe at the edge of it. Sometimes it does happen to me. So I'm hoping that just to hide a bit lower so that you won't get stuck. Because so sometimes you get stuck inside there, it's a bit annoying. And you have to get out of your sprint and walk. So that's pretty annoying. But um, seeing they're doing these changes is pretty nice. So that's, that's cool. Um, this one also they showed us in the live stream where now you can view all the enemy details in the setup page without ever having to leave this fire beast, which is very annoying. So now you don't have to leave at all, you can just stay in there and just configure everything and just continue on. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, this is just a minor UI change. So if you miss the uh, 3 stars, let's say you couldn't make it for 3 stars, uh, they will be greyed out and uh, you, then you know that you, you missed uh, that one. So minor UI uh, changes but also nice to have so yeah so that's the spiral abyss and let's take a look at quickly at the new adjustments and optimizations so these are all mainly like animations from what I see I'm not really gonna go through this in detail you can read it for yourself uh, there's one thing I want to highlight and I scroll down here I notice uh, around here so number 10 uh, number 10 so you guys know um, now the publisher for me Hoyu has changed to Cognosphere PTE Limited. So if you guys um, are worried like why when I bought something it's no more no longer gonna be Hoyu, um they just changed publishing so that is basically what they've done. Uh, they've done this for their other games like Tears of Temis so they're starting to do it for all their older games like Genshin Impact and Honkai I think. So they slowly move away from using the Mihoyu name to the new Cognosphere name which I think is uh, 
not gonna affect anything in my opinion it's basically the same company still they're still a sub company of mihoyu so it's not gonna change anything it's just that uh, i think it's just to give them more freedom to do what they want outside of china so they are more free have more freedom with this uh, new publishing name so that's pretty nice and as you can see here they said it will not affect the quality of the game so everything is the same it's still under mihoyu still so if you're concerned like you're gonna change company or something it's not gonna it's not gonna happen so yeah everything is gonna be fine and yeah basically that's the great thing about this change so that's what i had about this one anyway guys that's the full update and yeah pretty nice long update and a lot of stuff we can do uh, so now let's talk about the banners so the character banners have been unveiled already and let me just uh, go through all of them if i can so we're gonna go through all the character banners first so first up in phase one we're gonna have shen he first alongside shell so shen he will be coming with yunjin ningguang and chong yun so i really didn't expect um chong yun and ningguang to be making a comeback so fast i was expecting maybe another character but not from Liyue, maybe monstead but okay so this time we're getting all Liyue characters which is pretty interesting i'm not sure they've done this before uh, probably this is the first time doing it but all Liyue characters and yeah so this banner looks okay i mean uh yunjin i mean can can help shen her as well i guess but ningguang i don't really think she can really help her because ningguang is more of a dps shen her is more of a support and she's geo so uh, i don't know about this one but if you're looking for constellations for any of these four three characters then yeah this banner is pretty nice to pull on if you're going for shen her so yeah um chong yun i'm not really a fan of him but he's okay uh, if you need constellation with him, I think you need his constellation six to make him very good. But other than that, he's just okay. Um, Ningguang as well. I think you need uh almost all of constellations to make her like a true true uh, DPS. But uh, without C six, I think she's still pretty fine. So that's yes, pretty nice. Um, Yunjin, she's still new, so we don't really know much about her until we try the game. So once I got her, I will try it out and see how she plays, uh, in the uh, game. So yeah. So that's the banner for Shen he, and I think it's a very really good banner to pull on if you have like another cryo main DPS, for example Ganyu or probably Ayaka or maybe Yula as well. So if you have any of the cryo DPS, main DPS, then I think Shen he is a very really good addition to the team. Uh, we have to see in the game in action because she's still not out yet in the game, so we have to wait till next uh, on 5th of uh, January to make a full decision on whether you want to pull on this banner. So once the reviews are out and you see she's good, then you can consider pulling if you have like Ganyu, Ayaka or like Yula. So yeah, that's a that's one thing one thing to take note of. I suggest you wait first for maybe a few days. Once you see she's good, then you can go ahead and pull on her banner. It's pretty nice. Uh, looks pretty good this banner overall. Let's move on to the next uh, event which banner which is the Xiao banner. So Xiao is making a rerun, it's his second rerun and uh, his first rerun was uh, during the first lantern ride and now he's coming back this year. So yeah, if you're going for Xiao, he's a very good DPS as well. Um, he only problem is he only can DPS, he can't support anyone so that's the only problem. Um, but um, Xiao is a very fun character to play, I have him and he's pretty fun. Uh, main source of damage obviously comes from his uh, plunging damage, his uh, ult and if you manage to get his uh, 5 star pole arm, which is the primordial jade wing spear he's gonna be a fantastic character and deals a lot of damage as well so yeah so the force are same on Xiao uh, problem is as uh, Ningguang again can't really help Xiao much um, Chong Yun not so so he's pretty much, pretty much a solo guy so I guess if you're looking for constellations again for these three characters then and you're going for Xiao then this banner is not that bad at all actually it's pretty good and and Xiao is a very good character as well if you are a fan of his design or the voice acting or whatever go ahead and pull on Xiao's banner it's very good um yeah so this is uh, the uh, second uh, character banner that you can wish on for the first phase however this time mihoyu uh, did something different i didn't expect them to uh, showcase all banners at once uh, for the next version usually they only show the first uh, two for the first phase and then they wait until the uh, second phase when it's closer and then they unveil the banners but this time they're doing it differently they're going to show everything to you now so you can plan ahead and decide what you want so the next 
second phase is a Ganyu and Zhongli rerun. So Ganyu is making a comeback again, so this is her second rerun. Uh, for Zhongli, it's his third rerun. So for Ganyu, as you guys know, she is one of the most overpowered main DPS characters in the game now. Um, she's very easy to build, she's very free to play friendly, you, you don't need like a 5 star weapon to get her going. She is very very strong at C0 as well, you don't even need her constellations to be honest. And the 4 stars on her banner is also pretty cracked. We have Sing Chu, one of the best supports in the game. We have Yen Fei, also pretty good uh, DPS, uh, pyro DPS. And also Beidou can be a very good support as well. So very nice banner to pull on, I must say. And if you are free to play and you don't have a very good DPS, I really recommend this banner because Ganyu, he can really carry the team for you, you don't have to worry. And she basically just need a shielding character and she's pretty much good to go. Uh, like Zhongli, if you have Zhongli then Ganyu is going to be pretty good as well in the abyss. Um, and in terms of the weapons, as I said, the free to play options are a lot. You can choose a lot of the bows available to build and use on her. And she can use the Blizzard set, which is also easy to build because you can just stack the crit rate with another cryo character as well and also the artifacts and you're just gonna just need to have the uh, crit damage rolls on her and she's gonna do a lot of damage already so that's why she's pretty easy to build, not gonna lie and if, if I say if you don't have a main DPS yet go for Ganyu because Ganyu is really game changing for most of you guys if you are new to the game alright so that's the Ganyu banner and let's talk about Zhongli so Zhongli also is one of the most craziest character in the game or I can say one of the most broken ones as well so if you have if you don't have Zhongli yet and you're looking to get him if and you uh, you play uh, mainly on a mobile let's say or you just need a shield character then Zhongli is the one to go uh, assuming you have a very good main DPS already, then yeah, go with Zhongli because Zhongli can protect your team no matter what. His shields are strong. Uh, if you want to just stack sh uh, HP percent on him, go ahead. He can provide a tons of shield for you guys, uh, for your team. And basically, you can't die, in my opinion. Um, unless you're facing the new Reef Hounds, then that's corrosion. But if you're not facing those enemies, then he's pretty much unkillable. You just need to stack HP and give him a pole arm with maybe energy recharge or maybe HP percent. He's gonna you're gonna stay alive no matter what. And as usual, you're gonna get the same four stars at the Ganyu banner. So pretty crack four stars on this banner. So I, I must say this banner is a literally a must summon if you are probably new to the game or you don't have Zhongli yet or you already have a main DPS and you're looking for a shooting character. Then yeah, Zhongli is the way to go. Um, he is one of the most broken characters in my opinion, even at C0, he's good enough. Uh, so yeah, so both of these banners will come later on the 25th of January, so we'll see them later so you can decide whether you want to pull or not. Still have time for uh, gathering those primos, so you can still decide on whether you want to pull on these two banners. So that's pretty nice. Alright, now let us take a look at the weapons banner. I'm not really going to go through uh, too much in detail because I'm not really a fan of the weapons banner system in my opinion. So I'm just going to go through pretty quickly. So if you're interested in the weapons banner, so for the first phase, we're going to get the Calamity Quailer. So this is for Shenhe. Uh, this one is, uh, I believe, the best in slot for her. I'm not sure about the stats yet. I'll check it out later. Uh, we have the Pre-Model Jade Wing Spear. So this is the best in slot for Xiao. Kind of, um, maybe the staff of Homa is, is could be better on him, but um, uh, Pure Geo Jade Wing Spear is also not too bad on him, so looks pretty nice as well on him. Um, the 4 stars on this uh, banner is okay, we got a Lithic Spear, which is also a very good option for Shen as well. Uh, we got the Fabonius Great Sword, the Wit Save is pretty good, it's a very good catalyst, I think it's one of the best 4 star catalysts in the game. We have the flute, which is not the best in terms of its uh, what what it has to offer, and lastly, the Favonius Warbow as well, which is mm, okay. I mean, I mean, you can get it for free anyway, so it's fine, I guess. Uh, it's good for Goro or maybe Diona, but and that yeah, pretty nice weapon banner, I gotta say. And we have first time I think was we we're having uh, two pole arms in the same banner. I mean, same type of uh, weapon, so pretty cool. Uh, one thing. Uh, to take note is that the Primordial Jade Wing Spear is not really limited, so it's obtainable in the standard banner, just take note on that. 
So if you want to pull on this banner, just be careful because you might get off banner or you might get the one uh, the one you want on and the one you not maybe. So just be careful. That's why uh, I really avoid this banner. If you can, just avoid it, especially if you're free to play. But if you are will, maybe then yeah, this banner is pretty cool. I mean, it's a good banner to pull on. Not gonna lie, and you you pretty much can't go wrong. So yeah, pretty nice banner overall. So let's move on to the next phase of the version 2.4 weapons banner, which is the Amos Bow and the Vortex Vanquisher. So from what I see in this banner already, uh, it's a very hard. It's very hard for me to say you can summon this banner. I'll explain why. Uh, four stars, you got a Lithic Blade, Fovonius Codex, Dragon's Bane, uh, Fovonius uh, Sword, and the Sacrificial uh, Bow. Alright, so the Amos Bow, again, is not really limited. It's obtainable in standard banner, so which makes it already a not a, hard, a full skip, in my opinion. Uh, Vortex Vanquisher, I know it looks good on Zhongli, but it's just not that great still. I mean, the weapon is just mediocre, in my opinion. It's not amazing at all. So, I must say, this banner is a skip for most of you guys, I'm sure. If I were you guys, I wouldn't even bother with this banner. Just skip it. There are way better alternatives than these two weapons. I mean, if Ganyu doesn't need Amos Bow to shine, she can just use the free to play option as well. Zhongli, she doesn't need to use Vortex Vanquisher as well. There's other options available down the road for sure. We, maybe we're gonna have a staff of Homa again, hopefully, I don't know when. That's a better weapon for Zhongli. Um, there's um, the other energy recharge weapons, like the catch is free. Um, field of weapons like Protect Star Glitter, so we have the Black Cliff Polarm also, which is off table from the shop. So a lot of other alternatives you can consider instead of wishing on this one. Because this one I think is a bit of a waste. Um, because this is not limited and the water expand creature as I said is not amazing at all so it's a pretty much a skip for most of you guys so yeah so yeah so this banner not it's quite good this banner is quite good this one total skip so that is for me okay so now let us take a look at the new events pretty really quickly so we pretty much got the day login event this one we discussed already free outfit for Ningguang free 4 star um, the lantern right gifts as well Okay, these are all the characters that we discussed already. I'm just going to skip all this. And it goes to the events. So this is the Archon Quest. We must talk about it. Okay, this is the events. So the new events in version 2.4, the first phase. We're going to get the study of potions. So it starts around 7 of uh, January, a bit later. And we're going to get some Primo Gems, uh, all those stuff. Goodies as well in just by joining this event, pretty cool. So this event is I'm very excited for this one. Wind Trace is making a comeback again. So if you guys remember last time we had a Wind Trace event, uh, quite some time ago. It was a sort of a PVP kind of event where you match make with players and you uh play with each other using hide and seek. Basically, it's prop hunt. So if you guys played prop hunt, this is pretty much the same. You turn into an object and hide, and the hunter has to hunt you down, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, pretty fun uh, event, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna lie. So it's the duration is pretty long, you can see, they're giving us like a lot of time to play this event. So it's gonna be a very fun time in uh, this month to play with your friends or just chill uh, with other people. So pretty cool event, I really love this one. So a lot of Primo Gems, Talent Materials, Materials, EXP books and so on, so pretty cool. Um, This one's more of a chill event, so it's a Tanuki event, so you're gonna take pictures of Tanukis and can get some rewards as well, some uh, uh, Primo Gems and event exclusive furnishings as well, so pretty nice. Um, and that's it I think for phase 1, so those are the only two events looks like. And these are just uh, adventure booster bundles, we have the battle pass which is always the same. And yeah, so that is all the events for now, uh, for version 2.4 phase 1. Uh, I'm sure phase 2 will have all the other events to finish up the entire version as usual. And yeah, so that is very nice. I'm really excited for 2.4. A lot of things coming in. And we're going to end it with a little surprise. So if you guys didn't know, around yes, I think this morning, I just woke up and they teased Yay Miko. So <laughs> Yay Miko is, looks like it's confirmed coming to the game in the next patch, which is 2.5. So if you guys are excited for Yay Miko and you like her design or the character voice acting or just in general her design basically uh, we know she's electro and I think she holds a pi uh, I think she, she holds a catalyst I'm not really sure about this but from the artwork we see now 
uh, she doesn't hold like a claymore or something or a sword. She just holds something like this. So this this means she could be a catalyst user. So just assuming that is. And she looks nice. I mean, she looks pretty gorgeous, I gotta say. And um, yeah, if you're really interested in Yay Miko and you want to save up, I think now is a good time to do it. And if you're not interested in any of the characters that we just talked about, uh, after seeing this one, then yeah, you might want to save up for Yay Miko if you're excited about her. But uh, that's it actually for this entire video discussing uh, the version 2.4 update, the new events, the new characters coming, and also the new teasers for 2.5. So looking exciting for getting your pack again. So version 2.4 is going to be a very exciting patch in my opinion. And version 2.5 I also think is going to be very exciting because of uh, Yay Miko. So that's pretty nice. And I'm sure we're going to get some rerun characters for 2.5. We don't know yet. So we'll find out once that gets closer. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for this uh, video uh, discussing the version update notice and everything with you guys. So pretty nice update. And yeah, so hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.